Hello again. Uh, good morning. I can tell it's morning because of ice cubes in my uh, bourbon. Uh, that's good. Uh, so, <clears throat> trying to get back in the habit of uh, doing some instructional videos and not just showing off uh, some, uh, progress as I have been. So, I um, thought I might combine the two and uh, show a little bit of stump smashing, stump shrinking. Um, this is a technique uh, that's used for forming uh, sheet metal. Uh, shrinking, uh, as the name implies, uh, makes uh, the sheet metal smaller in one dimension. What this is useful for is um, uh, creating concave uh, uh, shapes, uh, like one second. like this. Uh, what happens is when you um, put an indentation into a piece of metal, it wrinkles up like a pie tin around the edges. And you can just generally smash those flat if you don't mind a wrinkly appearance around the edge. Um, and you end up with like a corrugated uh, or crenellated, I don't know, pleated uh, look. Um, but if you want to keep the piece of metal uh, whole, <laughs> um, uniform, we'll say, uh, what you need to do is shrink it. This is the opposite of what happens normally when you hit a piece of metal with a hammer. You make the, the metal thinner in its uh, thickness dimension and uh, wider and longer, or you know, either or, or both, I suppose, um, in the other two dimensions. Uh, it makes sense. You, you hit the uh, piece of metal um, between the hammer and the anvil, it, it mushes everything out. You think like rolling a pie crust. You know, so, so what happens when you create an indentation, you, you pound the metal down into a divot or, or something, uh, and it wrinkles up around the outside. Now you have to find something to do uh, that pushes that metal back together. Uh, what the shrinking does is it actually makes your metal thicker you can actually hammer metal thicker, yeah, I like that, and um, keeps the same contour, keeps whatever contour you're working for. Um, and a, um, excuse me, a little parched, um, and a common uh, tool uh, for doing that is a stump. It can be a figurative stump, uh, or it can be a literal stump. I have... I would say a pretty literal stump. This is a chunk of pine tree. Let's get in there so we can see what's going on. And then what I've done is I've created a couple areas where there's a depression. This is the main one. And then we have some smaller ones and a little uh, one that's smaller in diameter but a little deeper. Um, and then there's a couple areas. There's a groove carved in here. Uh, and that's all used alongside a hammer um, in order to help form the contours. Uh, another tool, I'll use that term, that can help with forming uh, depressions in sheet metal is just uh, something that provides a limited amount of support, but also some give. And uh, one of the things I like to use is um, a couple of layers of soft leather. And uh, that will allow you to um, when you hammer it to allow it to give where the hammer hits but also provide some support along the outside. So what I'm working on today is uh, another piece of uh, this project I'm working on for a customer and she has ordered a steampunk version of a prop from a science fiction show called SG-1, or Stargate, the, the television series. And the piece is a piece of alien technology. Uh, it's a metal strap that wraps around the hand with a glowing jewel where the palm would go. And then it, at the end of each fingertip is a metal, uh, I don't know what they would call it. I call them finger cots. 
Um, but it's a, a protective or serves some imaginary purpose, I suppose. Uh, so I've done one, and they'll be polished up by the end. Um, but so you can get an idea of the general shape, and it allows you to you know, allows the finger to work. You know, probably have to do a little bit more um, adjustments on that, but. I need to do one of those for each of the fingertips on the left hand. So that's what we're going to get started with today. And um, like I said, there's a couple of different methods of doing this. And I'm just going to kind of weed my way through this and uh, see which, which method reacts best. Uh, I could use the method I did for the other piece, which is actually a big wad of clay um, with a piece of leather over it to provide some support. but. Uh, there might be better ways to do it. Uh, as always, when hammering sheet metal, I start with um, a fully annealed piece of sheet metal. This is brass. Uh, I'm thinking that this is... Um, it's off the top of my head. I think this is 0 .09 uh, inches. Uh, maybe 0 .012. I don't know. It's pretty thin stuff. Um, so we'll see how it goes. First thing I do is I work around the perimeter lines. And this is just to kind of set the general shape. And it helps actually to, for the piece, kind of tells the metal where I'm going to be working. If that makes any sense. Another thing you'll notice that uh, I, I may have pointed out or may have um, described before, um, when hammering contours, uh, on the metal, it helps a great deal to leave a fairly wide um, bit of metal around where your final shape needs to be. The reason for this is that it allows me to use uh, hammer contact with a larger portion of metal to, um, to, to grab and pull the metal in different directions. You think like in terms of uh, the Play-Doh or a piece of Silly Putty. Um, if you have a larger piece of metal overall to work with, uh, you can get a lot more done. You get le more leverage against the piece within the confines of, of where the final shape is going to be. And um, I, I think English is failing me in terms of making that make sense. But um, I would definitely recommend you try it both ways. And I'm sure you'll come around to uh, this degree of thinking. Now, I actually have quite a bit extra in this direction and um, when I'm all said and done I'm likely going to be able to cut this and then do the second half of the piece with this side but I'm not sure so I figured I'd just leave that open Again, you'll notice I'm using a very small, uh, small hammer. I'm guessing this is a four. Maybe it says in here. I think it's probably a six-ounce hammer head. Um, a nice, uh, nice hammer. Um, and I'm not hitting it very hard. And that's by design. Just work it a little bit. Now you can see, maybe you can see, as I come up, it starts to get a little ripple, like right here. That's what I'm talking about. As as it becomes uh, concave, the surrounding areas become wrinkled to make, make use of that extra metal that I'm pushing out in that direction. And one of the things that'll uh, that I'll do right right now, and it's um, something that's aided quite a bit by that initial round, 
uh, with the flat of the hammer where I said I was setting the line is I can turn this over and where that line is make sure I'm on camera here. when I hammer this flat it's gonna give it's gonna give where that line is and what this allows me to do is control uh, control the shape of the metal a little better so now I have the contour whereas the rest of the metal is relatively flat I can get it flatter of course And that's generally the process that we're going to work. I'm just going to keep it that until it's as deep as I need it to be. And let's see how that goes. When we get to this stage, you really feel the metal uh, as I'm hitting it, it's going in every direction. Uh, and you have to deal with a lot of excess metal in all of those directions. This is another one of those things where It works best if you start out uh, with a thick piece of metal, probably thicker than this piece would be best. As it is, I'm already starting to see some lines of fracture sh forming where the metal work hardens. And you solve that problem by regularly annealing it. Uh, if I was working on something that was exceptionally precise, or uh, a very high polish or high finish uh, piece, um, you know, I would definitely work with thicker material and be a little more um, obsessive about that. With steampunk work, it, it gives it kind of a nice character to have a more of a cobbled look. Um, but in the end, uh, you, where there are any stress lines or fractures, uh, they fill and hold uh, the silver solder and uh, it all comes out all right in the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and pause the camera and anneal the metal again and see if I can get a little deeper uh, deeper sink out of this to, um, to finish it up. All right, I'm back. And what I'll show you is what I've got Ah, there it is. Uh, you can see, it uh, seems like a simple thing, and it is. It's not really hard. Um, most people uh, that I've seen um, have, a, have a little trouble getting started with uh, uh, hammer shaping uh, metal. They're better doing what I call metal origami or sheet metal origami, which is, you know, uh, bending, folding, um, the kind of the kind of sheet metal work that uh, a heating and cooling guy would do to make the ducts, uh, and less with the hammering and you know doing concaves and rounds. But uh, once you get started, um, th that's the thing is once you get started, you just want to keep at it. You'll get it. Uh, so what have I got here? I've got half of the piece that's going to wrap around the tip of, I guess, this finger. Pardon my gesture. So what's going to happen is I'll do another piece very much like this one. Uh, and then I will um, braise the two pieces together. Uh, before I do that, uh, where those, those little fissures, those little cracks showed up, uh, I'm going to go ahead and fill those. So if you notice, it's got a little bit of a polish to it. That's because uh, I hit it with the abrasive wheel to clean it up, get it ready for that. Uh, the obvious question, 
would be why not just start with thicker metal so you don't have that problem. Well, that would make a lot of sense. But uh, there's trade-offs with everything. Uh, the reason I start with metal that's this uh, this thin, when I have I have thicker stuff, you know, this is quite a bit thicker, um, is that in the end, this has to be something that gets wore. Um, uh, on the on the fingertips, it has to uh, be light, um, and uh, it has to be shaped in such a way that um, it's it's it can be um, a part of a of a functioning you know hand. Uh, and with the thicker pieces, it doesn't seem like much, but when you put a a heavier piece of metal at the end of your fingers, your hand doesn't uh, behave uh, in a natural fashion. Um, that added a uh, little bit of weight uh, really does add up. So I'm going to click the camera off again, and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, do a little bit of brazing to fill that, uh, fill those cracks and fissures, and uh, and then I'll bring it right back and show you. Yeah, there we are. Uh, you can see if I can find the find the frame. All right, we now have a nice solid piece of work. Get uh, one half of a fingertip. Doesn't look like much. Uh, we cut that out. We'll do the other half, and we'll put them all together. Maybe I'll do that in another video. Um, I don't know if the lighting is good enough to see where those cracks were. Focus. Right in here, you see just a little spot of silver that came through. And what that uh, actually does, uh, beyond simply filling in some gaps, is it makes the whole surface uh, more rigid. Even though this has just been annealed by the, by the process of brazing, it's actually much more rigid now that it has a layer of that silver solder over top of it. The silver solder is a much harder... Um, alloy than the brass is and that'll aid the formation of this uh, through the through the end of its creation now one last thing I'm gonna do that really kinda sets off a piece like this is I'm going to reset the perimeter lines and to do that I use the edge of the stump and I hold the, the piece uh, perpendicular to the the line of the stump and then I just work around the edge of the outline that I'm doing, keeping the edge of that of the piece that I'm uh, shaping uh, against the side of the stump, and this goes in and it sets a real nice harsh hard line. And then I can come back around with it flipped over, and pretty much do the same thing from the other side, and that helps to flatten. The supporting piece and that's something you would do if you were creating a divot in a dish or something uh, it's not quite the same uh, necessity for a piece like this but it um, it adds a, a much firmer definition to the line so right here on the very edge I don't know if I'm showing that um, it softens out over here so I can come in and just nice crisp lines um, makes it a little easier to, to predict where uh, everything's going to end up in terms of the final shape. Uh, but there it is. That's going to be half of this piece here. And you'll see when it's all done, it all pulls together and it rounds out real nice. And that's it. Thank you.